to the latest on Casey Anthony, the Florida mother accused of murdering her young daughter. NBC's Carrie Sanders has some new details this morning on the connections between this case and the O.J. Simpson trial. Good morning, Carrie. Well, good morning, Natalie. More documents are being released today detailing the state's case against Casey Anthony. Kaylee Anthony's mother has now been in jail for five months. And as this continues, her birthday was celebrated on Thursday. On her 23rd birthday, Casey Anthony sat most of the day alone in her cell. A jail log shows on Thursday she had no inmate phone calls, no video visitations. The only people she did see were two lawyers on her defense team. Her only surprise, a $100 deposit into her commissary account from her father, George. Accused of killing her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee, with a trial still at least seven months away, the defense team is beginning to show its strategy. First, Casey's image. From the days when she sported sunglasses to when she was arrested to her multiple appearances in court, each time a different look. Jury consultants say it's important to begin softening her image. In the beginning, she had that cold, indifferent, killer kind of look. Somebody that had no emotion. Now they are trying to give her emotion, get, have her look like a mom who has lost her child. There were approximately 17 hairs that Dr. Lee found that you did not. The defense team is also beginning to lay out its strategy to take on the forensics. It's expected prosecutors will rely heavily on that science. So when it was revealed, defense expert Dr. Henry Lee, who helped defend O.J. Simpson, found 17 hairs in Casey's trunk after the Orange County CSI team had finished studying it for clues, it became clear the defense team will attack the state from its initial gathering of evidence. Well, it tells us that the car was not completely processed at the time that it was allegedly processed by the law enforcement, with all the implications that that entails, and we intend to get into that at trial. Meantime, the land where Casey Anthony's body was found is up for sale, and some are now asking if the memorial to Kaylee that is on the side of the road that leads to to an elementary school should be taken down. No amount of teddy bears is going to bring her back. I kind of feel bad saying that, but then again, I mean, at what point are you going to stop? You're just going to keep, you know, going with it? Also beginning to come out are the subpoenas of those who will be called to testify. Among those served are Casey's parents, her one-time boyfriend, and her childhood friend, somebody she used to play with in the woods right here where her daughter's body was found. Natalie? Carrie Sanders in Orlando. Thank you, Carrie. Dan Abrams is NBC's chief legal analyst. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Natalie. The fact that they've brought Dr. Henry Lee, of course, so we remember him from the O.J. Simpson trial, the chief forensic scientist, and he seems to, the defense team seems to be focused on these 17 hairs yeah. that were found in the car months after that car had been combed through by the evidence teams. What does this tell you? Well, look, it, it's a classic defense strategy, which right. is to say that the prosecutors, that and more importantly, the investigators were sloppy here. They bungled the case they from the beginning. They didn't investigate the way that they should have. The mm -hmm. problem is what evidence they didn't find doesn't explain away necessarily evidence that they do find. Mm -hmm. So if they find incriminating evidence that's introduced at trial, I don't know how helpful it'll be that there was other evidence there, uh, other hairs, et cetera. Now, they would say, well, look, this shows that you can't necessarily trust the evidence that was found. You know, that's always a tough argument to make. Yeah, and, and but you have hairs, also some stains that were found after the fact. I mean, that... It, you know, combined with the circumstantial evidence in the case. I mean, isn't that important, though? I mean, if they were missed? Yeah, look, it's significant, but you can go to any crime scene and you can find certain evidence uh, and recover certain items after that the were, yeah, after, after the fact that were missed. With that said, this is the classic back and forth you see right. between prosecutors and defense. But again, I think it's just really important to note that just because they didn't retrieve other evidence mm -hmm. doesn't explain away potentially incriminating evidence. All it does right. is potentially posed out is what they're what they're going to be shooting for does this put any doubt into the minds of jurors about the physical evidence that was retrieved meanwhile in these pre-trial hearings we see her image has changed so much she's no longer wearing that jail uniform that we saw her in rather now she's wearing the white cardigan you know the, the purple shirt 
How much of, of a factor is this in potentially influencing a jury pool down the road? Yeah, I mean, look, there are two issues here. First is before the trial, and the second right. is at the trial. Uh, before the trial, in a case like this, where there's a camera in the courtroom and the world is watching, look, how she looks matters. Uh, mm -hmm. People can dismiss it and say, ah, oh, you know, this is insignificant, but the same applies at trial. I mean, jurors are going to be looking at her every day. The world is now watching her mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Uh, whether she seems to uh, be taking this seriously matters. Uh, how she appears in court matters. Uh, you, again, the her argument... emotion in her face, yeah. what you see when yeah, you're I mean, talking look, about her daughter. We, we can argue that shouldn't matter, and that's right. a fair point. But the reality is, it does, whether people like it or not. Right. Meanwhile, also, as Kerry mentioned, they're starting to subpoena, the prosecution's starting to subpoena some of potential witnesses, including her parents, yeah. her, um, Cindy and George, her brother. Um, also, you know, they're going to call her ex-boyfriend who told police she lied to him about Kaylee's whereabouts. Mm. A lot of people who seem to have different stories that came from Casey on the disappearance that's of exactly her daughter. Right. I mean, that, Is that, that, that the point? That, that's exactly right. That's why they want to call these people. These, pe these are not going to be witnesses who are going to come forward and say, I believe she did it. Right. These witnesses are going to say, look, here's what she told me. And prosecutors are going to try and build a case that says, you just can't believe the account she gave. She was lying, they will say, from very early on in this case. And that's why they want to call anyone who she spoke with um, in, in the days after uh, right. she, went, she disappeared. To show that the dots don't connect. Th that's right. Case, right. And very, very important witnesses. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine if you can get her parents in there uh, to jurors to say effectively, right. you know, this story doesn't make sense. That's very powerful. Well, Dan Abrams, always thank you so much. Sure,